G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, the market is down a little bit, so down 1.3% in total. But look, again, things are just kind of ranging. Altcoins, you know, they can be up a little bit and then they can down be down a little bit, which is much the same as Bitcoin. But we're going to have a look at the charts. Things are looking, you know, more bullish than they were before. It doesn't mean bullish just yet, but they are definitely looking a little bit better. The very interesting thing is have a look at Bitcoin dominance, 44%. So it's starting to climb. I think when Bitcoin gets on a run, this is going to jump up probably 50, maybe even get back to 60, uh, possibly even 70%. I think 70% is probably going to be uh, a stretch too far, but we'll have to wait and see. But I think Bitcoin is most likely going to be the first to run whenever that may be. It could not be for a while, but when it does, I think it's going to yeah, vacuum up a lot of the liquidity. Uh, and unfortunately, altcoins and even Ethereum and that, they'll get hit a little bit. But that's not to say they don't come back later. Really, what you're trying to do, and again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion, is you're trying to preempt what's coming. So for me, like I think Bitcoin's going to get up on a move uh, first, and I think it's going to explode fairly hard when it does. So what I want to do is start building up my Bitcoin position now before it's really started to move. Now again, I could be wrong, so you've got to work out what works for you, but this is my theory. I think Bitcoin's going to make a move. So I'm probably really trying to put more into Bitcoin uh, if I didn't have a position that I was happy with. I've got a position I'm happy with, so I'm not you know, pouring sort of everything into Bitcoin at the moment. I am kind of sitting on the fence with just a little bit of cash, definitely buying some Bitcoin uh, and some Ethereum, but really just kind of waiting to see what happens. But really, Bitcoin's where I'm focusing. And once Bitcoin really starts to move, then I'm going to hold off uh, on putting any more money into Bitcoin. I'm going to start to get into the altcoins while they're getting hit a little bit because they will still get dragged up. It's just they won't be going up anywhere near as much. Then when Bitcoin starts to level out, I have already built a really good altcoin position and they're going to start to pump and I'll probably start to take some profits from Bitcoin once it sorts of, once it sort of levels out and gets to certain price targets like really for a hundred there a hundred thousand is where I'll probably start to take some profits thereabouts maybe not quite uh, at a hundred thousand because a lot of people will probably do it maybe a little bit before but look maybe even after it'll we'll have to wait and see but again I'm trying to preempt what's coming so I think Bitcoin's going to run first hence why that's where I'm putting my money at the moment but keeping some cash on the side in case I'm wrong and we go lower. Again, once Bitcoin really starts to go on its run, then I'm not going to chase it. I'm going to be putting you know, my money into the altcoins. Now, this is if it goes up. If it starts to go down, completely different story. But once Bitcoin is on a run, I know the alts are going to be next. They're going to get dragged up with it. But once Bitcoin gets to, you know, wherever it's supposed to get, whether that be, you know, maybe it's only 70,000 or maybe it's 150,000 or 110,000, wherever it kind of levels out for a little while. And that's when the altcoins are going to start to go crazy. And again, I want to have had my altcoin position built when they weren't doing so well. I don't want to be chasing what's happening. I want to preempt what's happening. So for me... Now, again, I'm not offering anyone financial advice. This is just if I was just getting into the space now. Number one, I always start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the best and safest bet, in my personal opinion. Then you can start to look at Ethereum. And then after Ethereum, well, then you're in the rabbit hole. Then there's just a ton of other coins you can start to look at. But I think Bitcoin's going to move first. I just don't know when that's going to happen. It's already started to move. And again, we'll look at it. So I want to be focusing on Bitcoin right now because that's what's going to explode. Once Bitcoin gets on the move and starts doing its thing, I'm putting my money into the altcoins. Now you've got to decide what altcoins you like because then when Bitcoin gets to the top point, it's going to start to sell off a little bit and that's going to be a time to take some of those profits. Uh, and then again, maybe even, you know, start to put them into the altcoins there. Really, again, I don't want to wait for it to happen. I want to preempt it to happen. But anyway, moving on. All right, Ethereum dominance, 17.2%. And gas prices, again, way down at 8 So that's nice and cheap. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? Let's have a look. All right, Shiba Inu. So we got a story about that. <laughs> uh, really starting to pump. Amp doing well as well. Chili's very, very nice. Uh, I'm very happy with my Chili's position at the moment. I feel like I got in at a pretty good time and have a, you know, 
a reasonable size position, nothing sort of too crazy. Uh, and we'll have a look at somebody else who's quite popular in the space who's built a position in Chili's. Uh, and maybe that has something to do with it as well. Uh, Clayton doing all right. Uh, the graph, nice, uh, starting to bounce back. Thor Chain, so again, we've got a few gains there. Look, Polygon, uh, not quite 1%, but look, still up 8% for the week. So hence why I really like Polygon. Uh, a great project. And look, the Layer 2 thing, it's not even really started yet. We're, well, it's not quite finished uh, and built out at the moment. I think Polygon has got a whole lot further to go. But again, never financial advice. Terra Luna, nice, finally starting to make a bit of a move up 14%, which is really good. All right, so we can see there's uh, some gainers there, which is good, but this is what we got to focus on. So we, the whole market is actually down 1.3%. So... I'm guessing there's going to be some fairly sort of, subs not substantial, but there's going to be some losses there. The losses are definitely going to outweigh. All right, so again, internet computer just continues to go down. I can't believe this was worth nearly $400. So if you really like internet computer uh, and you're spewing that it was just you know out of your reach, well, it is an absolute steal at the moment. And I'm not telling you to buy it. I, I don't know enough about internet computer. I don't own any. But if you really liked it, you know, and you thought you'd missed it, this is an absolute steal. It, it's, you know, you can basically, you know, double your money to $100, not quite, a little bit less, and then you're going to forex it on top of that. So double and a forex, you work it out. It, it's a big move for it to get back to its old all-time high, and I'm not saying it will, though. But again, down 13.5%, and again, you can even see down uh, much uh, a fair bit over the seven days. Kasama down a little bit, which is interesting. I thought the parachains might have... Uh, done a little bit better for it uh, you know polka dots down though that did have its uh, coinbase pump and it seems like it's already pulling back a little bit but again you know kind of double digits a few there and then we're into the uh, single digit losses hence why the market is down only 1.3 percent there's not kind of major losses but overall things are sort of down filecoin down uh, look I really like filecoin and so I think this is a great price I was buying some not too much I bought a lot of it uh, cheaper again I think I got it for around 50 60 dollars something like that uh, but I did buy some at about a hundred and something dollars so at the moment I really like Filecoin uh, at these prices uh, chain link down at 24 dollars uh, not too bad considering where it's been sushi I mean it's under ten dollars I mean you know this thing was pumping crazy before and again, I believe there will be a sort of DeFi summer sort of thing that will come around again. And whether it's exactly a DeFi summer, let's just say another altcoin sort of season, uh, you know, it'd be crazy to think just how high some of these might go. So if you're liking sushi, uh, this could be a really, really good buy in point. So again, market's down. All right, we've had a look at that. Let's go and have a look what the chart's telling us. So again, we're still in this trend though. So we, we haven't fallen out of it, uh, at least not in a major way. So this is that upward trend. Now, what I wanted to show is I was saying this a while ago. On the RSI, things were bearish. So we just kept setting in lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. But then down here, we started to set higher lows, higher low, higher low, higher low. Then we got this peak. And yes, we could say this is lower than that one. Uh, but really, this is still part of that upward move. We did have that final red one though, and then it dropped down lower, but this low was higher than this low. And then look at this, and then look at this. So on the RSI at the moment, it can you can see that there was definitely some bullish divergence. And then we can go down here to the MAC chart, and we can see whenever these things cross, now again, most indicators are lagging indicators, so they're telling you something after the fact has happened but they still give you a bit of a picture of what's happening. So bearish, things got bullish. And again, you can even sort of hear, see it got bearish. Then it started to get bullish. Then it started to get bearish. Then it started to get bullish. And what we can see is things were really going, going down and we got down to here. And then we had this green, uh, again, this is bullish now as opposed to bearish. And then it looked like it was going to go red here in this blue one but it didn't quite cross over and forced its way up. And now we can see like it's in the green at the moment. Things are looking good, but really we can now get rid of this and we can get rid of this. Really what we're still looking for is this chart over here. So we are following this and at the moment, as long as we kind of stay above this, uh, it's more 
bullish than it is sort of bearish. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if this breaks, particularly over the uh, the next weekend. But we really are just getting rejected from this $42,000 uh, mark. And that's around about where the 200 day moving average is thereabouts. We're bouncing off it. So we haven't got into full bull territory. But what we can do is now shorten that up because I don't really need that anymore. And we can see that we have you know, this was a fake out, fell below, came back down and retested this line. Again, a further fake out, fell below, break back out, and then it tried to fake us out again, thinking we were going lower, and it's bouncing off these support levels here. So now we're just trading, trading sideways, really. Again, still mostly sideways action, but from the 19th of May, in a month, we have gone from basically 30,000 up to sort of 40,000. So that's actually in essence, even though there's a lot of choppy motion going on there, that is quite bullish, but it's still everyone, you know, there's a lot of fear in the market and I can understand why. And again, I'm not saying we're back into full bull mode yet. Uh, definitely not. We still could, you know, it's possible that we could go quite bearish and again, come down and break these levels. I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, is this that a Wyckoff, uh, um, not accumulation phase, uh, What's the other one? I've completely lost it. Anyway, the Wyckoff uh, distribution phase. And do we still have to see one more big low for that phase E that, you know, is how it usually shows up before we start to see the accumulation? Or because it's so known out there, particularly on social media, have the big players gone, well, no, we're not even going to call this a phase E because they know everyone's probably going to short it and try and buy it cheaper. And then they just simply let it trade sideways for a while before pushing it up. Or do they let it trade sideways for a while before pushing it down like a lot of people are expecting? It'll be interesting to see. But for now, I just think we really go sort of sideways for a while. I don't think there's going to be too uh, big a move to either direction. But this is crypto and this is Bitcoin. Look, it does what it wants. And just when you think you've got it figured out, it'll do the complete opposite. Hence why I much prefer to be uh, an investor rather than a trader. And look, investment wise, I know Bitcoin's been up at 64,000, so buying at 30 or 40,000, I don't have any problems with it, and I certainly don't have problems if it continues to go lower. Will it hurt in the short term? Absolutely, but in the long term, all I can think of is Bitcoin gets down to $20,000, and I'm buying it at $20,000, I know I'm basically going to triple my money when it gets back to its old all-time high, thereabouts, not exactly, but you know, close enough, 20,000 more down here, that was more 23,000, but that's still nearly triple my money if it gets back to its old all-time highs. And I firmly believe it will, it's gonna be like any market, it's just more volatile, it does it a whole lot quicker, it gets to crazy highs quicker than other things do and gets to crazy lows quicker than other things do. So again, that's my thesis, that's where I'm at. I'm happy to buy Bitcoin at the moment. Uh, I'm not pouring everything in at the moment because I wanna see what direction the market's going, but for the money that I am putting into crypto, I'm focusing more on Bitcoin Every now and then I might throw a few dollars at an altcoin here and there, particularly ones I like in the DeFi sector, I might do that. Uh, I did buy some Aave Uni uh, synthetics the other day. Uh, and yeah, they're just coins that I like though. And I think they have long-term fundamental value. So I will every now and then put some money into them. But DCA uh, will have to be careful because they are still altcoins and they can lose a whole lot in the bear markets like they have now. All right. Some very, very interesting sort of stories out there. So, crypto crash, prime buying opportunity, according to uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad author. So that's Richard Kiyosaki. I think he's a very, very smart man. Uh, he's picked crashes uh, previously. Uh, you know, go get his book, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, great book. You can even get the shortened version. It's a much smaller one. Uh, uh, I think it's a really great book and it really opened my eyes to things that are going on out there. And I like his channel as well. He's got a uh, channel that's on YouTube as well. So if you want to go check him out, uh, I think he's a very smart guy. Now, he was slow to catch on to Bitcoin uh, and he, even he admits that. But he now says the things that he likes to put money into most, gold, silver, Bitcoin. There is three things and businesses. He likes to buy businesses, things that make money uh, and obviously have, you know, they bring in cash. So, you know, your own business is a really good idea, not easy, 
but uh, generally that's where the big money's gonna come from if you run your own business and do things your way. As long as you're good at it, it doesn't work for everybody. Uh, and yeah, then again, gold, silver, Bitcoin. Gold and silver, while they don't have the crazy run-ups, or at least they haven't for a while, they're pretty steady. Like they generally don't lose too much money. So yeah, I like him and he thinks this is a great buying opportunity. He would like for Bitcoin to go lower to get in. He's really thinking more around the $27,000 level and particularly at $20,000, he'd be really, really happy. But even he understands that it probably won't go there simply because he wants it. All right, NFT craze cools as sales reportedly plunged 95% since May. So again, that's why you know I've invested in the NFT platforms themselves, not so much the NFTs. I don't know enough about art as I've said that, but that is why you know I said it on the channel. Just be careful with these NFTs. Some are going to moon and be worth you know tons of money in the future. Most of them are just going to be like your typical basketball Pokemon cards and things like that. Not really worth much at all. The good thing about NFTs is they don't have to be graded, like you're not gonna have them, you know, is this a 9.8, a 9.9, .9 or a 6.5? They don't, you know, they're always gonna be sort of brand spanking new like that. But, you know, whether, you know, the wider uh, population is gonna decide that that NFT that you have is really worth something, yeah, that, that that's, yeah what's out of my scope, so hence why I just like the uh, NFT platforms themselves. Again, I've got myself into Chili's, really like Engine, got into Super Farm, uh, Audius, I wish I had got into Theta, you know, probably could now, but it's just sort of something that I think I've missed. I think it's, you know, yeah, I, I miss Theta, you know, and maybe in the next bear market, whenever that may be, that'll be something that I'll look at. All right, moving on. So, Raul Paul, another guy, I think he's a very, very intelligent uh, gentleman. Uh, I pay close attention to what he says. It doesn't mean I go out and do exactly the same thing or exactly what he says, but I just pay close attention. He really is good at uh, you know, understanding financial markets, but also just macro trends and things like that as well. Uh, hence why it says here, macro guru Raul Paul says he's betting on these emerging crypto assets. And I won't go through the whole story, but we'll basically go down here. And this is uh, where he's put his money. Bitcoin, 25%. Uh, I have something very similar. Ethereum, 27.2%. Uh, I have something similar. I've got more uh, in both of these. Polygon, definitely got myself a good position in Polygon, not 15.3%. Have Chainlink, have Cardano, have no Solana. It's just something I've... Yeah, again, I never learned about it enough and I think I've kind of missed my position in there and you, you know, you can't have a bit of everything. Now, Aave, I also have Aave, got a good position in Aave and Chili's, same thing. I got myself a, a position in Chili's and even he's bet the same. So now I didn't know that he was specifically buying these coins, but it is very interesting when you find out that you are thinking somewhat similar to you know what people would consider smart money so there you go i'm quite happy when i saw this i was like oh yeah mine looks at least somewhat similar to that not exactly the same I've, I've diversified a whole lot more but i've definitely been thinking you know along the same lines as him ethereum big player layer one polygon big player layer two uh i've focused more on polka dot uh than solana and i have uh, Cardano, same thing, the Oracle's uh, position, got my position there. Uh, DeFi, I've got a whole lot more in DeFi, uh, but I definitely have Aave, and he's even thinking the NFT space as well. So there you go. All right, DYDX. So they've raised $65 million in Series C fundraiser. Whew. Still millions and millions of dollars just being poured into cryptocurrencies and a lot of it sort of into you know DeFi uh, and a little bit in the NFT space. So venture firms across the blockchain industry have thrown their weight behind decentralized exchange developer DYDX. The Series C round generated 65 million in direct funding for DYDX with venture fund uh, Paradigm leading the race, uh, leading yeah, the race. Uh, Haskey, Electrical Capity, Delphi Digital and others uh, also participated in the race. So again, tons of money you know, being thrown into it. The DeFi market has experienced a broad cool down in recent months, in recent months, sorry, due to the ongoing selling pressure faced by Bitcoin. 
this is when you want to get in. This is, you know, well, again, not financial advice, never financial advice, but for me, you know, everyone's gone quiet on, you know, sort of crypto in general, but particularly DeFi. So for me, I just think DeFi is a really good play. Again, I'm not jumping into too much DeFi stuff at the moment until I see Bitcoin, you know, decide where it's going one way or the other because it still dictates the market no matter what anyone else uh, sort of says. If Bitcoin's going up, everything's going up. If Bitcoin's going down, everything's going down. If Bitcoin's traveling sideways, well, that's the time for the altcoins to have their moment in the sun and shine. All right. Oh, God. Coinbase Pro to open up trading for Dogecoin rival Shiba. Shiba Inu. I'm not in Shiba Inu. I don't know if I'll ever get in Shiba Inu and I could be missing out on the biggest opportunity ever. But just these meme coins, if there's no fundamental basis behind them, I just urge everyone to be really, really careful. This is literally just a copy of Doge. If you want to get into a Doge thing, and I'm not recommending you do, why wouldn't you just go with Doge? What's better about Shiba Inu? Now, again, I'll probably have to look into it to you know, really find out if there's something more to Shiba Inu than there is to Doge, or they're just, again, complete sort of meme coins. But yeah, I'm, I understand why Coinbase is doing this, because they've started to add a lot of coins of late. They were just getting left behind by things like uh, Binance and things like that. So now they're just, you know, yeah, loading up on coins, uh, putting them on there, uh, and sort of following the trends, which is fair enough. But gee, I hope there's something behind Shiba Inu and it's literally not just going to be, you know, a meme that is never going to be worth anything more than, yeah, just a meme coin. So interesting, scary at the same time. All right, Druckenmiller. So huge fund uh, giant Druckenmiller uh, backs a $70 million funding for crypto asset manager Bitwise. So Bitwise Asset Management, a crypto investment firm with $1.2 billion in assets under management that is trying to make inroads in the country's $20 million financial advisory industry, has raised $70 million at a $500 million uh, valuation. So again, still big, big money being poured into this crypto space. <sighs> yeah. Funny for people to think that well, not funny. I just think it's interesting that people, uh, you know, can be so bearish when there's still so much uh, fundamental good news out there at the moment. But it's a funny thing that I've been thinking of lately. Fundamentally, the news is amazing, yet TA wise, are uh, completely bearish, and the market is travelling sideways. And it's something that I learned a while ago because at first I was really trying to wrap my head around TA, and I think I've got an understanding of it for sure. But what I've noticed is TA is not absolute. It will lie to you at times. What I've found is that sentiment is not absolute. It will lie to you at times. Fundamentals uh, are almost absolute, but even they can lie to you sometimes. Because again, you can have the greatest project in the world. If no one knows about it, no one ever hears about it and sees it or gets to use it, you won't make any money. There's a whole lot of things that go into things becoming successful. Great marketing, great technology, you know, charismatic, you know, people, you know, pumping it for you and all the rest of it. So again, again, TA looking bearish at the moment, fundamentals looking super bullish at the moment. And so what's the market doing? It's in no man's land. It's in indecision. So that's why I don't use uh, TA solely for anything. I definitely use TA. I definitely use sentiment. And I definitely use fundamentals. I'd probably focus more on fundamentals than anything. But I understand that, again, fundamentally, you can have the greatest project in the world. That doesn't mean it's going to succeed long term. There has to be more to it than that. All right. My brothers from across the ditch, brothers and sisters from across the ditch. So cryptocurrency investing has been rising in popularity among New Zealanders. And a fifth of the respondents in a new survey either plan to or have already put money into digital assets. The poll also found that young Kiwis are more likely to use micro-investing platforms than older generations. I love these micro-investing platforms. I use one here in Australia. It's called Raise. Uh, it used to be uh, Acorn. 
uh, but it's branched off into its own thing here in Australia. I also use Bamboo, and so there's links down below for both of them for anyone who's in Australia, and I think the Bamboo app might be available to uh, people outside of Australia as well, but they're both Australian uh, companies and apps. And you know, it's just roundups. Every time you use your bank card, it'll round up to the nearest five cents or 10 cents or a dollar or whatever you want. And I think they are absolutely amazing. And it's the best way for people to get into, you know, investing uh, on a day to day basis for themselves without kind of going all in. And again, there's, there's risks with these platforms though. So please don't go putting all your money into them. Uh, but I definitely uh, have some money in both of those uh, and they've both performed really well in Rays. I've been in Rays for, oh God, a couple of years now. I couldn't even remember how long. And I've only been with Bamboo for a few months, but I've taken money out uh, on two occasions. So I know that it uh, works at least on that level. We'll have to wait and see if it's here for the long term. And at least with uh, Bamboo is you can go really heavy on Bitcoin and Ethereum. They have Bitcoin, Ethereum, gold and silver. They haven't quite uh, got other options available for you as far as I know, but I know they are coming. So yeah, I love these micro investing things. I think they are brilliant, you know, particularly for young people just to get an understanding of markets and you know, they can watch their money go up and then go down and understand uh, how it all works before they maybe try and you know, do it all on their own, which is, you know, fraught with danger at times. But overall, maybe not a bad idea if you're fairly you know you've got a good understanding of financial markets and not just financial markets but the world and you know how things are going and you know whether you should have more money and safer things or whether it's time to get risky and all those kind of things there's a lot to take in you know when you're trying to look after your own finances uh, you know I think it's the best way for some people and I think it's the worst way for other people uh, and it's just you know you need to work out for yourself whether you have the ability to do better than other people with your own money or whether you would probably make a complete and utter mess of it and then maybe you're better just leaving other people uh, to do all that kind of hard work for you all right another hedge fund so a survey with a hundred hedge funds sorry not just one hedge fund a whole stack of them has concluded that CFOs plan to allocate over 7% of their portfolios in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies by 2026. It was literally less than 12 months ago where we were having big people come out, big players in the hedge fund space, saying, you know, you should allocate 1% to your crypto portfolio. Then it was only a couple of months later, they were saying you should allocate 5% of your portfolio to crypto. Now they're saying they're going to have over 7% of their portfolio in cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I'm gonna say right now, by the time 2026 comes around, there's gonna be a whole lot more, a whole lot more. Unfortunately, excuse me, the next bear market will really sh shake people. When that comes around, they're gonna be, oh my God, because we're still gonna have massive dips, uh, uh, you know, we like to think that now with the institutional players here, we'll become a little bit more stable and we won't have big bear markets. Well, we already have. We've seen, you know, projects go to a third of their price, particularly in the altcoin space. You know, they've lost 70, 80% of their value almost overnight. And some of them are still going down. Bitcoin lost 50% of its value, over 50%. I mean, it wicked down to like $29,000. It was at $64,000. So we're still nowhere even near close enough for you know this market to be a lot more stable. We're such a long way. I was, I was thinking about that literally just the other day. I was like, oh, you know, not that long ago, I thought this could be the super cycle and we're going to go mainstream and everything's going to happen. I don't believe that anymore. I think we're still probably a cycle or two away, actually. You know, the total amount of people worldwide that are in crypto uh, from what I've read on the internet, again, <laughs> you know, take that with a grain of salt, it's still only like maybe 2% of the world are using crypto. 2%. That means basically everybody else is not using it at the moment. So we still have such a long way to go, but that is what also, that's also what tells me, you know, if you're here now, I'm here now, you know, even with some of the big companies, you know, there's 50,000 large companies uh, around the world, you know, 
really, really big ones that they call corporations. Less than, I think, 500 of them are in the crypto space. So again, even institutional money is still such a long way away from crypto. You're super early. You know, the sky literally is the limit at the moment. If you're getting into good projects right now, particularly ones that might be around for another 10, 20, 30 years, oh, I shudder to think what the prices of those will be worth considering we're not even close to mainstream adoption yet. We are so far away from that, it's not funny. And that what's, that's what makes me so bullish long term. Short to mid term, ugh, yeah, we could get you know really smacked around. And once we really hit that kind of mainstream, yes, I think then cryptos will definitely uh, start to stabilize. It's not that you still won't have you know sort of bull and bear markets, but they won't be the kind of markets that we see right now. They will be very, very different. At least in the bigger caps, in the smaller caps, there are always going to be mad price swings all over the place. You know, much the same as investing in penny stocks and things like that. All right, last but not least. All right, El Salvador is considering paying uh, the salaries of their workers in Bitcoin. Oh. Long term, I love this idea. Short term, as we were literally, as I was literally anyway, just talking about, the swings in Bitcoin, this is dangerous, you know, particularly for people, you know, can they handle losing maybe 50 to 70% of their worth, you know, in a matter of sort of hours to a week or so, and then it being worth 50% less, if not maybe more, for long periods of time. We've got to be very, very careful with this. Again, I think maybe a percentage of their salary, like 5%, 10% or something like that, of their salary being in Bitcoin, uh, and then the rest, again, I understand for some countries, you know, their their dollars and, you know, pesos, whatever it is that they're dealing with, you know, have been devalued so much. Oh, I just, I don't know how that works for them if Bitcoin drops 70%, if it really makes a whole lot of difference for them, if all they kind of know is Bitcoin. But I would just be very, very careful with that. Again, I love the idea of, you know, X amount of percent being put into Bitcoin. I think that's a great idea long term. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't want to be paid all in Bitcoin, uh, you know, if you had a whole lot of bills that you had to pay. Again, I don't know how it works in the third world countries. I know here in Australia, oh, yeah, it, it would hurt. Um, but I suppose, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and again, you know, whether that's the way they go. If it's like, all right, 100%, you know, they're paying uh, everyone in Bitcoin how that works out for them through a bear market. Because if it doesn't work out so bad, well then watch out, everyone's gonna get on board and do the same thing. Uh, if it, you know, particularly if, you know, a number of people kind of, you know, lose houses and all sorts of stuff because all of a sudden they've lost so much uh, in value, well then that will, that will delay the long-term rollout of Bitcoin. Uh, and only delay again it just it'll slow things down particularly if those kind of horror stories get out and all of a sudden it's like yeah yeah you know bitcoin's amazing uh, but you know this one country when it went into a bear market you know nearly everyone sort of went broke you know four years later after that they all became you know sort of multi-millionaires or you know were 10x where they were at the bear market but they still had to go through that part where they lost a whole lot very very interesting all right my question is I want to know, you put down below, would you like to be paid entirely in Bitcoin or just a percent in Bitcoin? So just put the percentage sign down for percentage or entire. Uh, that's the way I'll know exactly your thoughts. Uh, mine is I wouldn't mind having a percentage of my pay paid in Bitcoin, but it would literally only be like sort of 5 10% because that's what I need to live on day to day, and that would really just be a savings thing. Because long term, absolutely, I love the idea of Bitcoin, and that's why I've invested in it. I don't need that Bitcoin tomorrow. I don't have to pay my rent with that money. I don't have to you know, feed myself with that money. That is money that I can leave sit there, and I can come back and look at it in you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years time, and then go, what a great idea. Now I can start to use this money. But you know, if I got paid today, went to pay my uh, rent tomorrow and Bitcoin had dropped 50% and that's all I had, oh, that's where I'd be in real trouble. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below, entire or percentage. All right, bit of a long one for me today. That's it. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. 
If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations to you. You've outperformed the market, and I'll see you next time.